Today we're making ami rice, omelet rice, Japanese dish inspired by Western cuisine. I don't know if there is a traditional proper recipe for it. I am just to make my own version of it and I am just going off what I have learned from anime. That's right. I learned how to make ami rice from anime. Also spurred on the my lovely life, my life daughter, who asked me one day, can you make me ami rice? Okay, after she saw an anime. Sure. Google, of course I Google it a little bit, but really I learned more about how to make it from anime. So today we got tomatoes, cilantro. I've got this Mexican rice pasta. And this is a nor. Uh, fiesta sides, nor uh, side packet that you add water and oil to. This is the Mexican rice version. This is the Spanish rice, which is more tomato based. We're using the Mexican rice, but this is what I'm using as the rice part of the ami rice. It's not actually rice, the rice pasta. Look that up, I'm not explaining. <laughs> We got fresh farm eggs from the Nielsen Hacienda. And we'll be adding a blend of cheeses, the Mexican blend. Monterey Jack Cheddar Asadero and Queso. And a little bit of mozzarella. I like mozzarella. Mozzarella is a nice and elastic cheese. Keeps everything together, and you get that nice little cheesy string in your bites. You know, the cheese string just wants to keep coming up and up and up and up. Come on, it's not cheesy unless it does that. Yes. Presentation and size of the bits and the way food reacts in our physical world, mechanically. Through Newton's laws, we're all part of the dining experience. I know how you young people are with your unboxing stuff and we're all into opening the box. Yeah, we just tossed that box away when I was a kid. Anyhow. Oh, yeah, we got that ready. Let's do some quick seasonings. We're gonna need the basic black peppercorn. Uh, got the fresh cilantro. Sea salt, just a little bit of chili powder. That's what we're gonna go for too. We need a little bit of chili powder. We got our ground peppercorns, and a little bit of that pink Himalayan sea salt. All you millennials love it's pink. Uh, we're gonna put that in. Farm fresh eggs, pepper. Dash salt, and put a little chili powder. We're going to put some cilantro in there. I don't like to chop my cilantro up, I like throw them in whole leaved. And the tomatoes I sliced.
go. try to flip it typically I try to normally or usually I try to flip my omelets once over this is a very thin omelet I'm just gonna go in with the Mexican rice pasta nor side dish packet no preservatives no artificial coloring no artificial flavorings nor makes these incredible little sauce packets, little soup packets that you can use as sauce. They have a little uh, cream of broccoli, cream of asparagus, little packets that I use as bases for my potato soups. Uh, Nor, in my opinion, is one of those institutional companies of the United States of America, which didn't really mess with the food so much like everyone else did. I guess you can't when your food very much already comes in a packet and it was made to be ready made. So we got our rice pasta in there. We're gonna throw on mozzarella first as base for our stringiness and our last cheese. today's world with the rising cost of food prices and yeah to me I, I, I am spoiled with like 40 cent espressos and 50 cent loaf of bread in Portugal 20 years ago and then I came back to America and looked at these five dollar coffee drinks at, espress at Starbucks or whatnot and, and realized that yeah, Americans can be pretty dumb about our commodities and our just status and the things that we just ingest every day and consume every day as a nutrition or a snack or a drink. Um, yeah, you ain't gonna find someone in Europe who's gonna pay five dollars for a cup of car coffee. Sorry, that's just not happening. And I, I'm of that same mentality. It's a freaking cup of coffee. Come on, some things are marked up way more than others. Some things are ridiculous. And then when you come into the prepared food world at a restaurant, that's when it's <laughs> that's when it's a straight up freaking drug game at that point. Like, what are they doing? Like, this is wrong. <laughs> Raping you. And really. Yeah, I, I can't really say and I've eaten a lot of restaurants and I can't say they were all freaking five star or fine dining, but you know, enough of them were. Yeah, there's no, no no cook in a kitchen in a restaurant I be out cooking in. You know. Or maybe they can, but they just don't have the time to give your dish the attention it deserves that you plan to eat. My opinion, you want to eat something good? If you know how to cook, cook it yourself. Because no one's going to love that dish the way you do. No one's going to take the time and preparation and the care picking the choices ingredients of the food you're going to ingest than you yourself or your mama that's it you or your mama the only ones are going to feed you how you're supposed to be fed and so at this point i like to cover it just to get the cheese melty melty that's not good Try not to keep the heat above three or four if you're on an electric range that goes up to eight and then high. Um, somewhere right in the medium, you would call it medium low. It's half a between medium and low on an omelet. And you don't want the egg to overcook. At the same time, you need the cheese to melt. 
So at this point, I really, I typically have a cover that is the size of my pan, or I'll throw a piece of aluminum foil over top of it, just to get the heat convecting to melt the cheese on top. Uh, otherwise, if you don't do this, you'll have overcooked eggs on the bottom layer, the bottom skin layer of your omelet. No one likes that. Okay. There's a point where you don't need to overdo it. As long as you got enough melted along the outskirts, you could just do the fold at this point. Turn it. Turn the burner off. I'll just turn it off. There's enough ambient heat at this point. And then when you fold your omelet up, you get the sides. Overlapping the middle, you let the ambient heat from the burner being off and the actual omelet itself melt the rest of the cheese. At this point, it's all ambient heat. You got to get your place setting ready at this point. You, you cannot have the overcooked egg. That's not acceptable. So here we go. There we got our Ami rice. It's on. No. Wouldn't be on your rice. Ketchup. Ketchup. And we're gonna need a hot sauce. Your hot sauce. Is there. Okay, at this point you are fighting for time. You need to get that drizzle of ketchup hot sauce mixture that you are going to mix up at your own discretion and your own ratios. Using whichever ketchup is on hand and whichever hot sauce you prefer or is on hand, I am using this Simply Nature Organic and I just grabbed this Red Hot Frank's original hot sauce because it's the first hot sauce I could find. I'm going to Ratio is all dependent upon what you prefer. I 50 50 is a good place, a good starting point. I lean towards a more hot sauce versus a more ketchupy sauce. So I prefer more like a 70 30 ratio hot sauce to ketchup. I believe in the purest Omni rice of Japan. It's just ketchup. And I do not like just ketchup and eggs. I am a ketchup hot sauce man. Because just ketchup, eh. Eh. Everyone needs a little spice in their life. Right? Everyone needs a little spice in their life. Suck it up, man. Candy approved. Nice and spicy. A little tomato. -y.
Okay. Now, I'm just gonna take very half broken educated guess on the funds. Uh, let's see, there were two eggs. There was a little bit of cilantro, a tomato, that Nord packet. That Nord packet was, I wanna say, 70 cents. Two eggs, well, egg price is very much fluctuated. And I have a, a source for Farm Fresh, so they were free, but throw in whatever the value of two eggs are at this point. Um, cilantro, not even half a tomato. Seasonings you already have on hand. Ketchup you already have on hand. Um, shredded cheese, I used uh, one tenth of two bags of shredded cheese. Got here minus the value of the eggs, eighty cents. I'm gonna give this. I don't know what tomatoes are. Whatever dollar or tomato, right? I'm being like that's expensive tomato. So fifty cents. Let's call that ten cents. Fifty sixty. And let's call this a dollar. Okay, fifty sixty dollar. So two ten. And let's. Now, what you have in your kitchen, you put a value on it. Let's call it 50 cents. Let's call it 50 cents. 210, $2.60. $2.60. You got dinner. Right? Yeah, I'm telling you right now, I know this is dope. I can just smell it. It's going to be dope. I'll turn around and sell this thing for $15. To you fools. Parrot food. That's the markup right there, man. You're all getting raped. Food's expensive, but it's not that expensive. Come on, you don't need to be spending $15, 20 for dinner to feed yourself every single day. That's ridiculous. Get off your lazy ass and cook. That is dope. That is fucking dope shit right now. Mm -hmm. oh Omni rice. Now, I'm not even a big Omni rice fan, but this is one good. Budget cooking from the apocalyptic kitchen. Peace out, y'all. Talk to you later. Mm -hmm.